Welcome back to Columbus. Released today, details on the Olympic qualifying schedule for the Americans. And they're going to be starting things off in Houston in Group A, along with Costa Rica, Panama, and Haiti. Group B gets underway as well in Texas. The semifinal and final will be played in Carson, California. Just a moment ago, Alex Curry caught up with Carly Lloyd. Carly, it's only been a week, but as a veteran on this team, what have you liked about what Vladko has done with this group? You know, I think uh, he's old school. He's got a philosophy. Um, he's trying to implement it, and I think he just gives the, the belief, belief in players. And, um, you know, I'm really excited to see what, what this team is capable of under him, and it uh, should be a great evening tonight. And you're starting with Press and Tobin up top. What do you feel like you need to show Vladko against Sweden? Um, you know, I think we just have to be dangerous up top. Um, you know, my job to hold the ball and Press and Tobin to, to get down on the flanks. And I think overall, you know, we work more working on building out of the back, midfielders connecting, and just trying to be a little bit more sophisticated to get into that final third, and uh, I think I think it's going to be great. Well, good luck tonight. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Appreciate it. She is your all-time active Caps leader currently, and boy, does she want to make a first impression tonight. You know, 2019 is starting to wind down. They've only got two games left, which includes tonight. But this year didn't start off the way many had hoped. The U.S. closed off a year that started with them dropping their first match of the year. Jill Ellis aside, turning in a listless performance in a 3-1 friendly defeat to France. Concerns only grew following a disappointing campaign at the She Believes Cup. The U.S. held to draws by Japan and England, their only victory coming against Brazil. But from the moment the World Cup began on Fox this summer, the Americans showed they had no intention of relinquishing their crown. They opened the group stage with a record 13 to nothing demolition of Thailand. France thought to be the biggest obstacle on the way to a repeat, and the U.S. disposed of them in the quarters. Megan Rapino backing both goals in a 2-1 win in Paris. And then Rapino also leaving her mark in the final while Rose LaBelle supplied the other goal. The Americans knocking off the Netherlands to seal a second straight World Cup crowd. So Jill Ellis concluded that this was the perfect way to go out. She announced shortly after the World Cup that she would step down as manager, passing the baton to Vlatko and Anofsky. She did stay on for the victory tour, which meant surpassing Tony DiCicco for most wins by a U.S. manager that lost to France back in January remains the only defeat of 2019. The Americans unbeaten in 21 matches since then. So a monumental 2019. Alexi, we'll start with you. What was your biggest moment from this year? Uh, biggest moment? Uh, okay, look, this is a team full of big, bold, at times arrogant, beautifully arrogant personality. It's what makes them great. What's, ma what's what made them successful uh, It's what's made them legends. A listener is not that type of player. She's not big, bold, brash in anything that she does. Hope Solo casts a very, very long shadow, and coming into Hope Solo's shoes and being the goalkeeper for the U.S. Women's National Team, at times it can be lonely, and you are asked to make that one save. That save she made against England on the penalty, I was so happy for her. You saw how happy her teammates were for her, for her to have that moment. It's almost the anti-type of player in who she is as a uh, as a goalkeeper and as a personality. It was a wonderful moment to be there. That's something I'll never forget. Heather, what's your big moment from 2019 for this team? You know, for me, there wasn't one moment. I think the entire World Cup, the U.S. made a cultural impact. I mean, they had the following of the entire country. And I think in the past, this team has been known as America's sweethearts. Very wholesome, very pure. Now they're known as America's badasses. And I think that in the U.S., right now in particular, that's a really important message for women and for young girls. So I think there was their impact uh, to, to win it and their impact the way that they want it. They're brash. They're unapologetic for their excellence. It's the things they do off the field as well as on the field. And we want to bring Allie Wagner into this conversation. Allie, come join us. What was your biggest moment? You were at all of these games. What was the biggest takeaway for you in 2019? It had to be the quarterfinal match against France in Paris. I mean, this was a team, I think the only team that some of the players feared. It was a team that I think caused a lot of nightmares for Jill Ellis because when you look back at some of the results they had in January of 2017 in the She Believes Cup, Jill Ellis was experimenting with things. She went into three back. She put Allie Long in the center of that three back and guess what happened? They got shellacked and there were a lot of questions being asked about whether or not Jill Ellis was the right manager to take this team to the World Cup. 
Flash forward, 2019 January. Guess what? France puts another three past the U.S. They go down 3-1. So as they march into Paris and they're able to exercise those demons, the crowd, the way they went up early, got the crowd silenced, and then sat back in a shell and asked questions that France really had no answers for. That will always be etched in my mind because the night before that match, I'd never seen Jill Ellis so relaxed when we met with her. And I think all the preparation, all the wrinkles that she talked about, the tactical nuances that she was going to have in her back pocket, she had prepared the team, and now it was time to sit back and let them do the rest. Allie, thanks. Look, there's still some soccer left to be played this year. Vlatko doesn't get an easy test in his very first game. It's Sweden and the USA. When we return, John Strong and Ali Wagner will be on the call. Should be a great one here in Columbus. Tonight, the Vladko Andonovsky era for the United States women gets underway from the frozen tundra of Moffrey Stadium in Columbus, Ohio. A frigid night here in one of the spiritual homes of American soccer as the fans make their way inside. Freezing temperatures, a little bit of wind, some snow in the air earlier today. Certainly not weather that will intimidate the Americans' opponents tonight. Sweden, another rematch with a perennial contender a rematch for that matter just a few months ago at the World Cup in France and an excited crowd here today welcoming the World Cup champions out ahead of the first game under new coach Vladko Andonovsky. Ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing and welcome singer-songwriter Caitlin De La Durante to perform tonight's Star-Spangled Banner. 
One of the longest histories the United States has against any opponent. One of the most challenging opponents they've had as well. Sweden beat them in the quarterfinal of the last Olympics. Worst ever performance for the U.S. at a major tournament. In fact, the last time the U.S. lost a World Cup match that didn't end in penalties, that was to Sweden as well back in 2011. The U.S. prevailing 2-0 this summer at the end of the group stage in France. The big question tonight, what sort of an impact can Vlatko Andonovsky have on this team in such a short amount of time? For that answer, we say hello to Alex Curry, who's shivering down on the field. Tonight, this U.S. team begins a new era under Vladko Andonovsky. And when I asked Vladko about his focus with this group, he said even though it's a short camp, it's an opportunity for him to get to know these players individually, start building relationships, and really understand their strengths and their weaknesses. But his main focus is to shift a mentality. He said the most important thing is to reset from the World Cup and now focus on qualifying for the Olympics early next year. And when I talk to a handful of these U.S. players, you can tell that they are re-energized and they are ready for this next challenge. Katja Korolev, 31 years of age from the United States, our referee this evening. She's been an international referee since 2016, was a fourth official at the World Cup, and was also a referee at the Under-17 World Cup last year, as well as a familiar face from NWSL. 60-year-old Peter Gerhardsen took the Sweden job a couple summers ago, taking over for Pia Sundhager, the former U.S. coach, and, and talking to us yesterday, was excited in large part about how big the crowd would be here tonight. They sold this place out, even if it's not full. The highest attendance this year in the Swedish league, where most of these uh, players play, was just over 3,000. So he was excited to get some of these younger, less experienced players an opportunity in a big environment tonight. It is an opportunity for some of these players to show something, Ali, to Vladko Antonovsky. Who are you excited to see? I mean, it has to be Casey Short first and foremost. I mean, this is a player that was probably one of the last ones cut, and you you don't know where Vladko Antonovsky's head is in terms of where Crystal Dunn's going to play, so that position could be wide open for Casey Short to sneak on and swoop up. I mean, she is the greatest 1v1 defender, we would say, that we have right now in the U.S. And then, of course, Carly Lloyd. I mean, Heather Riley touched on it, but Carly Lloyd, I have not seen her as happy as she was the other day in our meeting with her in pregame about how she could perform under Vlatko Andonovsky, the freedom she feels, and the way that she can check off that back line, hold up play. It's all going to be an evolution for her, but I think she feels excited that she can develop as an experienced player under Vlatko. The U.S. team that is ready to go, a U.S. team that certainly was energized in speaking with them yesterday about this new change as they end out an incredibly successful year against an opponent that they are used to playing at a very high level. So who can make that good first impression and who can try to leave 2019 with a good taste in their mouths? We're underway. The Vladko Andonovsky era for the United States is underway. His team wearing red tonight. It is the Swedes in yellow. 
for the United States, it is very much about making a good first impression on just the ninth full-time head coach in 35 years of history for this U.S. team. And a early ball trying to spring Tobin Heath forward now. She created an own goal in the World Cup off of this 1v1 matchup with this exact type of setup. It's a corner on this one as Anna Anderson was defending her there in the U.S. an early attacking chance. And it's a direct ball out of the back that springs Tobin Heath. If the opportunity is going to be there for the U.S. to get in behind early, they're going to take it. Tobin Heath then sizes up her defender 1v1, tries to clip this in, but can't get past that near post defender. Anderson got a foot on her clipped ball that put it in the back of the net, made it 2-0. In France this summer, Lavelle to the near post off the corner. And it'll be cleared away for the Swedes. The headlines in Sweden coming into this one is the World Cup final that wasn't the hope for a rematch that never was at the World Cup. They fell to the Netherlands in extra time. For that matter, it was the clash that wasn't. As Sweden made five changes to their lineup for the group stage match. And yet in saying that, of the 22 players on the field right now, 17 of them saw the field in France at the World Cup. The 2-0 win for the U.S. And ostensibly put them in the more difficult side of the bracket. And we know how the rest of the story went. So given all that, Ali, what are you interested in looking at here in this one tonight? I'm really curious to see how the U.S. plays out of pressure. I mean, that front four for Sweden is so fast, and Peter Gerhardsen is asking them to be brave, to not get pinned in their back end, and to look to press the United States and win the ball high up on the pitch. So I'm really curious to see how the U.S. manages that in their attempt to be more sophisticated in the way they build out. Looks they're knocking that away. Lavelle. Going to run it Anderson there. Gets a foot. Another U.S. corner. Just a couple hours up the road from her hometown of Cincinnati. One of two Americans on the field. Part of FIFA's best 11. Named this fall. Heath clipping it in. into that high pressure up the field. We saw the U.S. working on a lot of practice here last night. That is the U.S. play under the pressure. Sauber run for Dahl Kemper. The challenge there of hurting. And a collision there. And Eriksson and Lavelle. That'll be a free kick for Sweden. right now of course this quick turnaround not just to the Olympics but for Olympic qualifying which was announced earlier today it'll take place down in Houston starting at the end of January and Vlako Antonovsky told us yesterday he wasn't entirely sure at first whether he should coach this camp so quickly after his hiring so quickly after the announcement but he said I didn't want my first time with this team to be competitive matches Sweden on the other side they already know they're going to the Olympics the European Olympic qualifying is based on results of the World Cup they're in the midst of qualifying for the European Championships in the summer of 2021. Whereas the U.S. will have one more game this year coming up in Jacksonville this weekend. This is the final game of 2019 for Sweden. And Kuhlberg on the ball. It's her international debut at the age of 28, playing the pass for Anna Gloss. Nice try to recover and couldn't. Instead of the middle now for Sigianti Olma. but Hurtig able to get around her and Hurtig now cutting in. Lost her footing and lost the ball. right now for Mertz. It's Horan instead. And she's able to get out of the pressure to find short. Early ball. Press has Lord in the middle. Here comes the cross. Carter Lord. 1-0. 
Took him just five minutes. And not a bad start to the new era under Amnoski. Horan just spins out of pressure, and you can see how high Casey Short is. She's holding the whip. She gets in that half space with Kristen Press, running that channel on the outside. Carly Lloyd do exactly what she should do, being off that back shoulder of the other center back, slides in behind, as that is a perfectly placed ball by Kristen Press. And the easy tap in for Lloyd at the end, but she does the work of getting the right space. And the smiles continue for that woman there, who sees potentially a rebirth under Andonovsky. 119th international goal. What's so interesting about it is since she turned 30, her goals per game rate is more than double. 83 goals in the 50 games since her 30th birthday. We just get better as we get older, right? There's Herzig now. Saw a good recovery off the first touch. certainly the case for Lloyd. Press gets in behind and Carly Lloyd just stays in that blind shoulder path. And Noski likes it. Well, if you're splitting hairs, it took him twice as long to score against Sweden tonight as it did at the World Cup, but it is still an early goal. The player Carly Lloyd, we've all been talking about just how thrilled she seemed by all these changes. It is one of the interesting stories going forward. Listen, it is an incredibly wonderful reason. It's the best reason possible for Alex Morgan not to be a part of the team right now. She and her husband, Servando Carrasco, expecting their first child, a baby girl in April. Congratulations to them and their entire family. So here's Carly Lloyd getting the opportunity to try to make that good first impression on Blanco Andonovsky and talking to us a bit yesterday about some of the changes that he's expecting from her. Some of the things she's looking to do well here tonight. Her pressure there on Kuhlberg sends it out for a U.S. throw. And the pressure from Sweden. Press for short from Horan. Or the play out of it. Lavelle's making a big run up the middle as Lloyd pops up out wide. Short's continuing her run forward. Casey Short, running a Kuhlberg on her international debut. Oh, just poked that away. Third corner for the U.S. in the early running. And the pressure has been there from Sweden, but the U.S. did a nice job in that last attack of solving it. Players being brave on it. And Casey Short talked about two players coming to this match. Casey Short, Carly Lloyd, both of them incredibly active already in the ongoings. And the heat to take it this time for the far flag. Back to defend for Sweden. Again, a header on frame. That was from Lloyd. A comfortable save in the end for Hedvig Lindahl in her 169th international appearance. Carly Lloyd is a big target for the U.S. You can't leave her this open. Free header in the end. Unlike Sweden on set plays. The U.S. women are in action now. The men will be in action starting next week. They got the game with Canada. We'll have the game with Cuba on Tuesday, November the 19th. The match played down in the Cayman Islands as uh, Cuba Stadium in Havana, not fit for purposes of this match. Coverage beginning at 7 Eastern here in FS1. You can stream it live on the Fox Sports app. Switch there. Really well brought down. Tobin Heath is now on the left. Just press has come to the right. He's gliding past one defender. And takes the bump from the second. Didn't get the foul that she or the fans wanted. Saw not able to stop any sort of counterattack, though. Cross in and does step away by Sauerbrunn. Well did not. Sigiata Oma getting an attempt away. It's a call to a first involvement tonight for Alyssa Nair. The 
half as one's coverage tonight sponsored by AT&T. Saves officially. The shot of victory for the U.S. over Sweden in the World Cup group stage. It's for Moran. She's got a couple different options to choose from. It's too far for Lloyd, Kuhlberg, and Lindahl able to clean that up. Fifth different coach that Carly Lloyd has scored a goal for in her international career. Not bad. How many Let's of the see. other four can you figure out here? All right, Pia, Greg, excuse me, Pia Sunwell, Greg Ryan, April Heinrichs, Lockett, and Jonas. There you go. I just had to go back chronologically. It wasn't that challenging. talk from both sides about the things they want to do differently tonight. What do you pick it up on here after 11 minutes or so? I mean, you're seeing it right there in the shape, the 4-1-4-1 defensive mid-block from the U.S. Sophia Jakobsen now trying to run it short. Because he got to cross away. Sabra in that intercept. Trying to clear it to run there for Aslani. She's going to get there. Her ball into the middle. Dangerous attempt. That was sawed in there with a big tackle right in front as her take. Thought she was going to have a tap in. Danowski up off his seat for that, trying to direct traffic as press carries forward. She's got Sonnet to her outside. It's not going to reach her though as Anderson gets it away. For Horan. That's going to be out past everyone. Well, here's a look at what Sweden just tried to do against the U.S. And Tobin Heath's trying to play out of pressure. It's too tight. The giveaway occurs. And then aslani has got two runners in the box. Offs for the second one as this one glides along the six-yard box. But Sonnet there with the necessary intervention. She played just eight minutes at the World Cup. Has started for the last five for the U.S. this fall. As Kelly O'Hare and Ali Krieger, among others. Available right now, so she's certainly taking advantage of her opportunity, the Portland Thorns player. Here comes Sweden again, Jakobsen going to return it for Blackstein. Yes, took the touch on short. She'll get a cross in. That's popped up in the air. Nair's able to get there in the end. Again, it was Lena Herzig with an opportunity. And Sweden starting to knock on the door for a tying goal. They have a lot of pace up top, and they're getting in behind. And that's one area that Sweden thought that they could take advantage of the U.S press them and use their pace to get at their backs. I don't think close of our Aslani hesitated when you asked her yesterday, what's an area you think you could exploit? She said, our speed versus the U.S. defenders. Skip past the bell. Never been a skill there when she tracks it down. Swedish players we talked to yesterday were excited about this. It's a great way to end their year. It was it Alvina Erickson told us? As I said, it was an opportunity for some of these younger, newer players to really step up to a high level, see how they do. And a lot of talk, and hopefully we'll get to see her about Benison, the young 17-year-old from Sweden. A lot of expectations falling off those back girl's shoulders what she can potentially accomplish for this team. All three players we talked to yesterday wanted to see her get on the field. We're excited to see her get the opportunity because it's you're seeing less 17-year-olds breaking in at that age to the international level than once did. Such a good point. No more Heather O'Reilly's for the U.S. Maybe Mallory Pugh. There's Jakobsen again. They're working on Casey Short a lot of that right side for Sweden. And that's going to be out for a goal kick in the end. And look, that's the strong side for the Swedish team. They like to push on Hanna Glass on that outside. Jakobsen will tuck in. This is the last attack with Jakobsen playing provider. To get that ball in behind Casey Short. And it's Black Stenius who serves the ball in. But again, two runners are getting in the box for Sweden. Shorter went almost a year without appearances for the United States until the late August game against Portugal. She's playing in the fourth of the 
last five games for the U.S. this fall. Helping the Chicago Red Stars to that appearance in the NWSL final this year. And Lavelle with the skill to get out of traffic. Vlanko yesterday and some of his players didn't end up in a chance on that one, though. No, but you're exactly right, John. I mean, some of those decisions that players made, I don't think they would have made previously. They would have opted to go vertical quicker. And with Carly Lloyd, as she talked about the timing and the freedom to check out of that pocket as the nine and be a bounce player. See, that continues to be a theme tonight. Now Horan didn't have an option upfield. Well, could quite find the angle there for Adam Lavelle and Horan intercepted by Anderson. Well, on it there. Just dragging <laughs> her dig down, knowing she was beat. And just a talking to from Katia Korolev, the referee. And this is the tendency of Hertig. She likes to cut in to the inside. That one touch takes her by Sonnet. Well, Peter Gerhardt's in the Sweden coach was immediately up, barking at the fourth official that he wanted a yellow card for that there. Professional foul should be a yellow. Is that one of those things, if it's a competitive match, it's a yellow card. When it's a friendly, you're less likely to see it. You know, I gave up trying to judge the referees, all right? Christina Uncle texting me right now. Don't worry about it. I know they worked hard, Christina. And look, there's space outside Julia. It's in this 4-1-4-1 set, and you're seeing one of the other mids for Sweden creep up in there when they have their too low. One of them is releasing, getting alongside Aslani. They're just not able to find it right now. I think the channels are tight for the U.S. That's making that entry pass difficult. Slotty, their good recovery there on the pass, which was behind her. Couldn't connect, though, with Black Genius. Given right back, though, to Sweden. Aslani on the turn. Jakobsen will pick it out wide. She's got the overlap from Glass now. Short try to recover. And able to recover the good tackle. It's going to be out for a corner. But it's that combination on that far side between Jakobsen and Glass again. Proving the challenge for Casey Short. The timing of the overlap was spot on. And Anderson who plays in England for Chelsea. The only start of the World Cup for her was against the U.S. It was her redirection. Made an own goal for the second goal. They are getting herself set. In swinger, really no one there in yellow at the back post. Knockers <laughs> a chance. The flag will come up though for offside. Alex, what do you hear down there on the U.S. bench? Well, Vladko has been on his feet this whole match talking to his team, telling them to press, drop back, have the back line make the runs. But he's also been very vocal with Sauerbrunn and Sonnet to get open, hold the ball, press, and then once again, get back open. <laughs> well, listen, we, we talked about this some yesterday. He's inheriting an incredible situation, but it's all how much coaching do you do? Do you have to, to a certain extent, just sort of sit back and watch an evaluator, or do you need to assert your personality in your first game? You know, I thought that was the interesting part of our meeting with him, was how much he was already tactically working on. You think you'd come in and, like you said, just kind of cruise into the situation, get your bearings, but he came in and immediately knew there were areas that this team could improve upon and needed to improve upon to stay ahead of the game, really. So we'd be able to get through that press. Aslani. Horan for company. And will be in behind for a second corner in quick succession for Sweden. So 
Laura Aslani, who Alexi was talking about, she and Jakobsen playing for the team now known as Tacon in Sweden. Next year is going to be Real Madrid. As they have decided to dip their toe into the women's game. An in swinger now. Came off the back of Herzing. Bouncing out, the U.S. got it clear. Tribute to our nation's veterans, a part of the fabric of who we are here at Fox Sports. We're proud to partner with The Mission Continues, a nonprofit organization deploying military veterans to build strong communities across the nation. You can visit missioncontinues.org to learn more here as we approach Veterans Day. Single the run. Lavelle in a pocket of space. She's got Heath out wide as well. And Lavelle just takes the bump there from Lena Herzig. Lavelle has that pull away speed, but you got to go back and credit Becky Sauerbrunn. She steps up, drives forward, and then plays a penetrative pass. That's one thing that Blocko wants to see out of her is playing forward, and she finds a key playmaker in Lavelle. It's going to be Heath standing over it, and then Dahl Kemper talked her out of it. We're going back to defend for Sweden. Oh, trying to do something with that if she was backpedaling, short throwing her body in, and that will be a whistle and a foul. Casey Short, one of a handful of players that Blanco Andonovsky told us yesterday are going to be limited minutes wise aware of the very long season, particularly for players that were involved in that NWSL final. So he's got a couple of planned substitutions in mind just to make sure he's managing the load on some of these players at the end of this year. Lavelle and Heath and Ertz, among the others he mentioned to us yesterday in that regard. Sienzo, a good first touch there. Couldn't find the pass, though, for Aslani. The right back for Sweden at the World Cup against the U.S. Playing at the center of the park today. Drifted that pass too far. What a turn it was for Alyssa Nair. The defining moment, as Alexi talked about in the pregame, the penalty save against England. We were watching that one in Nashville with the American Outlaws and the explosion of noise just in that room. And what that save meant. Clipped over the top for Horan. Not going to find her. It's knocked away by Kuhlberg. We've seen it a couple times now with the attack mids when Carly Lloyd checks because that's going to be more of her strong suit as the nine. You're seeing those runs in behind by Lindsay Horan, by Rose Lavelle. yesterday playing out between the two center backs and sort of building from there Lavelle skipping away from Ziggy Oma. and we'll come back to the near side for Sonnen there's Tobin Heath Heath will clip it in Roy was being held there she fell Sawn it back for Heath. And now in for Press, who made the run, cut back cross, and around there was taking a bump there, couldn't do anything with it. But it's really good patience by the U.S. It was 3v3 for a very long time until Kristen Press comes over and overloads the zone with this run. 
in behind her defender. The space is there. It's well weighted. But the cross behind her in. That's for the opening goal in the World Cup game against Sweden. Off the corner, Heath there stepping in to take it away from Aslani, then chops her down. And he told us yesterday, there really has been a great energy the last couple days, but she said, you're going to have that any time. Yeah. You have a change in your work environment. He's telling us it's really what happens down the road. She was excited for this matchup. She told us yesterday, a opponent like Sweet will wake you up early. Not just going to show up and play and be able to get away from it. Great way to sort of begin this era, she felt. Yeah, they're in the honeymoon phase, but the energy was palpable, right? And you see it tonight, the way they started this match. It has a very different feel than the Victory Tour games we experienced after the World Cup. Although it's the end of the year, it feels like the beginning. Her take lost her footing there. She cut and sawed off that ball. He's wanting to run with this one. They're sliding in in front of Aslani. Just to prevent the quick break. Jakobsen nowhere to go with that one. Listen, you have a way better baseline than I do. I've been around this team for about three years, but it was obvious yesterday. And so I guess the question is, how do you, if you're Vlako Andonovsky, keep that going? Is that just wins? Or is there anything else you can do to make sure you keep the positivity going long term? It's relationships. It's hurt it quickly. Going to clip that in behind Sauberg. Got just enough of a touch and short to clear it. Hey. Yes, you could say uh, this is relative to a women's team, but I think as a female player, as a woman player, the relationship you have with your manager is what keeps things fresh. It keeps you driving forward. And with Andonovsky, he always seems to change things. And whether that's with the system, with the team, individually, he's going to challenge these players. And that's all these players want, is to be hungry for more, to learn more, and to continue to evolve. Otherwise, it gets stale. And we've heard that from players, including Heather O'Reilly, who's with us, who's uh, played for his club teams, FC Kansas City. And Rain FC about the relationships he builds. It's going to be a chance now for Press on the ball from Lloyd. She's got Lavelle across the middle. Press cutting it back herself. And it's in for a goal. 50th international goal for Kristen Press. The 12th American to reach that milestone. This goal is so good, and it starts with the defensive setup. They're in their 4 1 4 1. Tobini pinches back in and wins the ball that they're trying to play to one of their attacking mids. And then the break is on, and Kristen Press is adios to two defenders and finds the back of the net herself. But the system, the way this U.S. team is setting up defensively, Sweden is not figuring out how to break it down. And then the U.S., we know how good they are on the counter. Kristen Press makes a meal of this one. Goes to her left, gets the little touch off Lindahl, but it still tucks its way into the back net. So good. And I think Sweden was not anticipating coming out facing one player pressing them, and that's in Carly Lloyd and having four players sit in that midfield line with Ertz shepherding in front of the backs. It has been a big year for Kristen Press. She and Dahl Kemper are the only two to have played in every game this year for the U.S. He reaches the... 50 goal milestone earlier in this game. Her team high 11th assist of the year. And the U.S. now in a comfortable position, just shy of a half hour. I'm really controlling things. I mean, the space is there outside Julie Ertz. Sweden just cannot find that entry pass into those two players. It's all very predictable and labored. It's on the ball for Heath. Horan has saw advancing up the right. She was drifting offside, so Horan didn't play the pass. And so far, so good. The opening half hour of the Vlatko Andonovsky era for the United States. And there might be a third coming as Lloyd gets on the end of the clip. Tanner, oh, what a goal that is. What a finish by Carly Lloyd. 3-0 United States.
making it look easy. Tobin Heath takes a beating on this one. That one goes over the top. And then Carly Lloyd, so aware. She knows Lindahl's off her line. Right there, just sniffing in behind the center back. Takes a really good touch, even though she's fading away from goal. Clips it up and over Lindahl. And that's something. Two goals and an assist in 31 minutes tonight for Carly Lloyd, who you told us before kickoff was a player that could stand to make a strong first impression. Safe to say she's done so. It's only taken 30 minutes. Short able to recover. Turn her around. And see how Sweden recovers from this. They were excited for this game. They seem confident, even aware of the fact of some of the younger, newer players they were trying to bring in. Lockups to get in the cross away. Dutch genius couldn't do anything with it. The best chance to score early on off a cross was stabbed away by Emily Sonnet just in front of Hertzig. On the end of that switch, but Ertz picks it back up. So that's all that. Aslani intercepted by Sauerbrunn. You can feel the pace quickening up a bit now after sort of a slower beginning to the game. I mean, given all that, I mean, this is sweet. This isn't some scrub team. Are you surprised at 3-0 32 minutes? Yes, I am. But I think when you come in as invigorated as these players were and on a cool and crisp night like tonight and you know that you're winding down the year, you're energized and you're seeing it in this U.S. team. And when they're on point and sharp and crisp, we know what they can produce. Having said that, I do think that this system and the, the way that the U.S. is setting up defensively, it's causing problems for Sweden. This is a team that likes to play on the break. This is a team that likes open space, and the U.S. is not giving them that in this mid-block. It's for Press, not a second chance at that one. As well to spin away from the defender. Trying to measure that pass in for Lloyd. Had intercepted, Kluberg making the play. So if you're Sweden, how do you adjust here and stop the bleeding? Is it a matter of stopping the bleeding or is it a matter of how do we prepare ourselves for the Euros and for the Olympics? You know, I think with this group, it's going to be about trying to push on and, and get their team to a tactical place that Peter wants to see out of them. That's playing positively. That's on interceptions, playing forward and not always playing sideways and backwards. That's pressing high up in the field. I think they're going to want to work on those things as opposed to be concerned with the scoreline at this point. Slotty now and Hertzig running off. We're going to try to find the angle for the pass. Don Kemper there to intercept. And there had to react quick to get rid of it. And Sweden have won each of their first three qualifiers for the European Championship. Slotty got a block to that cross. As have Iceland. They'll play Iceland next year right at the end of the qualifying process. Championships in the summer of 2021. So trying to find someone to throw it into. In the end, Hertz just miscontrols it out. And here's some of the nasty from Carly Lloyd. Just sneaking in front of her center back and then chipping that one over Lindahl, who's way off her line, thinking that ball's going to be played first time in behind. Two goals and an assist tonight for Carly Lloyd, up to 120 international goals in her career. Sauerbrunn does here, just getting rid of that one under some pressure. <laughs> the square ball across the top of the 18. I don't know if that's what we're talking about in building out, but getting a pin get punished. We'll work for Jakobsen. And it breaks 
reach down there as the pass was behind Glass making the run forward. Gerhardt said the Swedish coach talked to us about yesterday. We want to be aggressive defensively. We want to be brave with the ball. Look for some of his players, you know, less of the defending counter mindset, but that's not what he would have been hoping for so far. Rosani steps in and gets caught there by Horan. And to be fair, Sweden doesn't have their full complement of players. Horan's going to get a yellow card for that, looks like. some point. Well, here's the challenge by Haran. No ball. And swipes into the ankle of Aslani. He can take it too quickly to poor Levis liking. You mentioned Nila Fisher. Part of the FIFA Best 11 center back. She's one of three center backs in fact, Sweden are without tonight. We had heard from some of the Swedish journalists yesterday. Oslani was a bit banged up coming into the game. They weren't sure if she was going to go tonight. She definitely felt that tackle from her end. As you mentioned earlier, temperature right around freezing and dropping. Not as much wind as we were expecting this evening, which is a good thing. Aslani now sending it in short, sending it away. It comes to nothing in the end for Sweden. She's still not moving 100% there. Aslani after taking that tackle. And what's this guy thinking right now? Thank you. <laughs> They're trying to battle her way through. She's able to come out of that with the ball. Methodically up the middle here, through the middle. It'll be short on the outside. Moran has press outside of her. Short now drifting inside. Lloyd making the run, sending out a hat trick now, but alert to that was Lindahl to get there in time. Big Lindahl, the age of 36, coming off her fourth World Cup. We asked her yesterday, how much longer do you think you're able to keep playing? She said, well, how long does my body keep hurting in the morning? How much is it hurting each morning as I'm getting up? She certainly was, it was yesterday about how the Swedish team exceeded the outside expectation in the World Cup semifinal. She said, we didn't exceed our internal expectation. We want to win this thing. And so they're excited about the Olympics coming up. Next year, what they can do there is that's a foul in the middle. Just the fact that they haven't won a world championship and that expectation, you know, she said Pia Sundog was the one who told us and taught us that we can beat anyone on any given day, including the U.S. And now Peter's the one that's changing their tactics. Kuberg, bad giveaway to Kristen Press. Lloyd to her right, Lavelle's the trailer. Press wanting this one herself. Comfortable save for Lindahl. a lot of that from the U.S. When they're pinned in the flanks, those players are spinning out and they're trying to change it. He couldn't quite pull off that move. 
move. Turns it running the other way. Genius in front of her, gonna get it now. Sauber and trying to close the angle. Clipped into the middle, no one there though. Except for Alyssa Nair. She'll go quick. There's some space here for Lavelle to operate in. That's solid up to her right. Press making a run to her left. Lavelle drew three defenders around him before getting rid of it to Sonic. And Heath will drive that out. You could see the minute that ball was coming back to her, she was shaping herself up to send that thing into someone. It was either going to be a beauty or that. Another bad giveaway by Sweden. Press picking it up. Lavelle wants it. Miranda to her left instead. Cut off there. It's good recovery by Gloss in the end. And Miranda a bit slow to get up behind the plate. Slotty. Kept that ball in play. Couldn't find a teammate, though. Report. Sarah, Alexi, and Heather will return to the field from whatever warm shelter they found during the first half and give us their thoughts on what we've seen so far as it's a bit slow to get up after taking that foul. We'll add a more on our halftime sponsored by AT&T. Right, so we were told her husband Zach was going to be here at the game tonight. that headband at halftime. As Horan picks it up. The final few minutes of the first half has gone just about perfectly for the United States in the first game under Vlato Andonovsky. Goal six minutes in. Two more that fall in pretty quick succession around the half hour mark. Lloyd with two of them, including a phenomenal chip over Hedvig Lindahl, and she wins that free kick. As we said, as ever in these friendlies, you're expecting substitutions, but particularly the number of players who are coming off a very long year. And it's just a good opportunity to see players for Vlaco, especially against a quality opponent. He's standing over it. But the end of the traffic and the header for Horan is right to Lindahl, her third save of this half. Trying to go quick. For Black Stenius and Paul Kemper was there to make easy work of it. Ertz again takes a hard bump there. And they're going to call the trainers out immediately. It was Julia Zikionti Olma. He's going to get a yellow card for it. Well, it's on the putback ball that Julia Ertz has no idea. Zikionti Olma is right behind her and going to collapse right there. And a hush over Montfort Stadium as Julie Ertz is down. And you see Kosovari Aslani wearing the armband trying to rally the troops for Sweden right now. Ertz is being helped to her feet. That's a good sign. For the other American on the field, along with Lavelle, named a FIFA's best 11 this year. No way, she's going to come right back out, Julie Ertz. Of course. Play with the unique distinction of having played in two World Cup finals in two different positions with two different last names. We'll see how much time is added here. At the I mean, listen, if you're Vladko Andonovsky, could this have gone any better as Lavelle couldn't find the target there? Is there anything you'd be wanting to see better or different from how this first half has gone? You know, I think in the way they're building, it's been patient, but I think there have been some poor decisions out of the back, but that's to be expected. Ultimately, no. I mean, you're getting the press when you want it. You're getting the nine play by Carly Lloyd bouncing off that back line, and then the players are not forcing it down in these wide areas. I think there's been really good patience in their build, and you've pointed that out a few times, John. And then, of course, the goals. 
Well, 30 seconds here on the watch of referee Katya Koroleva. The ball did just come out for a throw. Aslani off the throw, Ertz running with her. Aslani bouncing off the one tackle, got it in for Brasinius. It's behind Hertzig though. Bridge down for Sweden. With her head up, just didn't have any options upfield. And that should just about be the end of the half. We'll see though as Aslani pokes it away from Sonnet. a halftime whistle. So far, so good for the beginning of the Vlatko Andonovsky era. Marley Lloyd, two goals and one assist. Christian Press scoring the other goal. And it is 3-0 for the United States at the break. Here against the number five team in FIFA's world rankings, Sweden. Let's hear from Carly Lloyd. She's live on the field right now with Alex Curry. Carly, you guys are up by three at half against a tough opponent in Sweden. What has this team done well so far tonight? You know, I think we're really fluid. We're, we're moving uh, for each other. Uh, midfield's doing a great job um, keeping the ball. Backline's doing a great job of feeding kind of those balls in between the lines. And, um, yeah, us up top, we're, we're trying to be dangerous. And I think overall we're, we're definitely implementing some of the, the philosophy that Black is wanting. And, um, you know, it's little by little we're going to keep getting better. Thank you, Carly. Thank you. Two goals tonight, 120 for her career, and this one was an absolute gem. Sarah, Alexi, and Heather on the other side. 45 minutes down, 45 to go here in Columbus, United States 3, Sweden nil.